Welcome to Modern Art Blitz. I'm your host, Matt Gleason. We have three fabulous guests from the Los Angeles art scene today. We're going to start off, well, we couldn't get Manet, and we couldn't get Monet, so, but we got the best one. We got Cynthia Minet, Minette, but M-I-N-A-T, M-I-N-E-T, just like the, the masters of your, Cynthia Minette, welcome to Modern Art Blitz. Thank you, Now, you're not, a, you're not a painter, at least no. not now, painting is not part of your practice. You have painted. Yes. But you didn't go through the Manet phase, the Monet phase. You went right to the Minette phase. Okay, so um, you are primarily, at least now, a sculptor, would you say? I would say that is correct. And um, you've got this body of work. You've been working on this now how long? It's about eight years. Eight years? Wow, okay, okay. I know it's been a while. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, a, I'm a fan of this stuff. I actually, uh, we took one of these, one of your pieces down to the... Uh, to the, uh, uh, which art fair did we go to? I don't even remember now. Aqua, right? Aqua, yes. Yeah. Oh, God, you're, oh, geez, geez. Um, we went to the Aqua Art Fair and we had a little video room, the lights were low and we had a glowing bird of yours. And it's, they're made out of? They're made out of recycled plastics okay. for the most part. Kind yeah. of an environmental subtext? Definitely an environmental subtext. Okay, yep. but not preachy. No, Just I hope not. Beautiful art, makes people pause, makes people think. And, and de definitely uh, illustrating in a, in a somewhat abstracted way, wildlife, is that, a, is that fair enough? Uh, started out as domesticated animals. Oh. Yep. What, what, so what even the falcon, the even yeah. the falcon is a we domesticated the, animal. Oh, because the falcon comes, you can, fal okay, okay. Right. But not, you have it, you've done an elephant and that's not. Well, elephants are domesticated. Really? Yeah. Really? Uh-huh, I rode one in Thailand. I'm going to go to the city uh, animal licensing board soon and find <laughs> out how, uh, how, how I can license my elephant. Woohoo! Okay, so tell us what we're looking at here. So what we're looking at here is a piece called Pack Dogs, and it is five huskies pulling a sled. It was made for a show that originated at the Anchorage Museum. Alaska because I like to try and respond to the site where my work is going to be huskies, and huskies, Anchorage, okay, totally Anchorage okay. exactly so the show was called Gyre and it was about the impact of plastics on our environment for the most part plastics in the ocean which is a huge issue and so I wanted to make work that was site specific to Alaska but also tied into the theme of the show. And this has been so shown besides Alaska, This right? has been shown also. It, it went to uh, Atlanta, Georgia, and then it came to USC, to um, the Fisher Museum. Okay. So they've uh, traveled around, and now they're at Crafted in, uh, at the Port of L.A. in San Pedro. The Port Just of L.A.? Just the dogs, not the sled, but the what, other what dogs. What is Crafted? It is a large warehouse that has um, original crafts for sale. And okay. it's a big space right by the harbor there. The it's word beautiful. craft, kind of a bad word to a lot of the art world. Yeah. Fine art and craft, not supposed to mix. California College of Art and Craft became California College of Art. And, and yet you throw that word around so freely, so confidently. Wow. What's up with craft? Well, I think the way I use craft is well crafted. Ah. So uh, I put a lot of effort into making the work myself, uh, building it from an armature and developing it um, so that it's, you still see how I've made it, but that it's pretty finished looking. So I think craft is. Uh, has those qualities, right? Where something isn't just thrown together. Even if it's made from recycled materials, it still looks like it is kind of, uh, I don't know, it's sort of become a little bit more refined as a material. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. And, oh, oh, what are we looking and at This here? is the elephant. So this is a this large is the piece. This wow. is the elephant. And yeah, this is life remember? size. Yeah, you came down to see these at Museo. In Orange County. In Anaheim. Because then Anaheim. you went to see the you went to the baseball game. It was near, the, near enough to a baseball stadium. I, exactly. I could get there. Two birds with one stone. Hey, so, um, so, and now if I'm an elephant, and I'm not, but if I was, I'm this size. I mean, if an elephant walks up to there, it would be like, 
This is a pretty, uh, this is the size of an adolescent female Asian elephant. So they are smaller. <laughs> you know, yeah, because I do a lot of anatomy. I do a lot of research. A lot I'm of people really fetishize <laughs> just that, that really <laughs> subcategory. So I think every <laughs> elephant is going, hey, baby, right? Yeah, so, oh, boy, OK. Oh, yeah, yeah. So don't her name is don't Gladys. Laugh. You will only really encourage me, OK? So, OK, OK. So um, now, now, why red? Oh, well, because it was in a show at uh, LAX. It was part of an installation there and uh, was in the International Terminal. And I wanted to have the animals have a color that relates to their uh, habitat. So they're mostly in India and in Thailand, these Asian ele elephants, where it's warm most of the time. Okay, so, so red as a color that's okay. warm. And yeah. so, uh, so how was how was showing art at the airport? It was great, yeah. actually. It was a challenge because it's uh, it's in the customs hallway. So bringing it into LAX was a trip, and getting it into the display case was also a challenge. Everything had to come apart to fit through this door to then turn and go down this hallway. Um, but what was great was that as we were installing people were walking by and they recognized the animals as being something from their country. Like one guy said, wow, you know, that looks exactly like the elephants that we have in our country. Wow. And another guy said, there's, there's a camel too. The other guy said, oh, you know, my family has 20 camels back at home and it looks just like that. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. And so since they're made out of recycled, like, water bottles, juice bottles, all kinds of stuff, there's baby bathtubs on there, um, the fact that they were able to recognize animals that they're familiar with was pretty great. And okay. I think being in the International Terminal, you know, it appealed to that population. Do you, does putting together this stuff with plastic, I mean, it's, it's, it becomes like a puzzle, I mean, you have to find... Yeah. Okay, and, and I guess maybe this is the problem with plastic, the stuff's archival, it lasts a while, right? Yeah. You're not worried about these things falling apart anytime soon, are you? Well, they can't really be outside in the sun because oh, really? they will break down. The sun breaks unfortunately. down Unfortunately. Okay, Heat so I noticed because all, all of these installation shots, it's a dark room. Yeah, that's because they have lights inside too. But you have to be careful with plastic that it won't ever go completely away. Apparently all the plastic that's ever been made is still on the planet. It's just in tiny pieces. Tiny little pieces Which where it's eaten by fish and eaten by people okay. and no, it's just a so horrible situation. So is the answer situation. just go back to glass? Can we just get uh, rid of plastics? Well, I wouldn't have a medium to work with, so that would be a bummer, but otherwise <laughs> probably better for the environment. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. And, wh and yeah. what year was this? So this was uh, 2014. Okay, mm -hmm. so the elephant was 2014. Right. No um, Republican, red state. You know, no, not. Not, but just... But just, people, unfortunately, that's the elephant they chose, people, those people Republicans. Find, uh, people find meaning where they find it. I right? was going to make a donkey, too, and mm -hmm. that was really going to be sort of uh, too much like the, it. Yeah, okay, <laughs> okay. So, well, let's move on, because I know you got, we've got a whole zoo. We ah, have a whole zoo. The Here's the falcon. Bird right. to Miami, it was immensely popular. Oh, I'm uh, glad. And life size, right? I mean, yeah. you made it, that's like how big a falcon is. They're was. all life size, yeah. yeah. Okay, so you do a lot of uh, research, anthropo, is it anthropo? No, that's anthropo. Anatomical the, research, I would say. Anatomical. I watch a lot of videos on YouTube. You do, zoological. You do a lot of zoological yeah. research. And a lot of just research into uh, animal behavior. And that's where I found out that the falcons are used. Um, in commercial applications. So besides just for falconry, which is exotic, they're also used uh, in bird abatement, where places like SeaWorld, uh, places like airports, where birds become a nuisance. They fly the falcon, and the falcon chases away all of the birds. Oh, like the falcon's like the badass to... bird. Like Absolutely. All the other birds say, oh, watch out for that guy. I had no idea. Ass. I just thought they were a, a football team that blew the Super Bowl. <laughs> um, so, uh, and, and what, uh, it's all just plastic. And that one's all, yeah, they're all plastic. Mm -hmm. and it's mostly like water containers and... Do friends save stuff for you? They Is do, that, yeah? fortunately, okay. yes. Yeah. Like, yes. Like, like you, you know every one of your neighbors that uses Tide so that you can get the orange? Yes. The, like, yeah? Okay. Yeah. yeah, so I have two guys. I'm at the brewery, Art Colony, okay. and I have two neighbors who... Re 
regularly put beautifully pristine arrowhead five gallon water containers on my doorstep. Okay. And, and you, it's but you fantastic. do cut these. You don't just throw them. I mean, I you, cut you can them. cut stuff and make shapes I that you need to fill it. in there. Yeah, okay. yeah. What kind of lighting do you do? You use so I'm this? using LED lighting, okay. and it's been a development from uh, LEDs that I would solder together to using different types of connectors to using more sophisticated um, LEDs. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. on the last piece, I'll show you what I'm doing there. To yeah. go a little further back, when when did you, how long have you been an artist? I mean, you know. Since time, immemorial. You you're born an artist? Uh, 15 is when I first started taking art lessons. Yeah. I took art lessons under the Santa Monica Pier before the Santa Monica Pier was developed. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they had art With an artist under named there? Susan Weinberg, she had an art studio. Wow. And I took painting and sculpture with her when okay. I was 15. And that 15. was it. That just. Help and that me. was that was uh, 16 years ago. <laughs> so, uh, so well. <laughs> now, and I first met you in the 90s. Yes. Right. And you were you were going out, or you or you you still were teaching at. Uh, I was teaching at Antelope Valley College when Antelope we first okay. met. Right. Wow. Yeah. And, and do then you still I, teach there? No. Now I teach at Moore Park College. Okay, Moore Park. Yeah. That's, that's just another. That's another. A, that's, that's far away in the other way. <laughs> Antelope Valley that way. More park that way. Okay. That's right. Okay. So, yeah. so, um, and you teach? I teach sculpture, 3D design, life sculpture. Sometimes I teach drawing. I used to teach life drawing. Are there, are there yeah. students these days like brain dead compared to 20 years ago? Are they brain dead? I wouldn't say that they're brain no. dead. I think that the they phone, have a the shorter phone? attention span shorter because attention of the darn phone. Because of the phone. The phone is an issue. Have you thought yeah. of doing a Facebook post as a lesson plan so they'll actually that look at it? That would probably be a really or good Snapchat idea. Snapchat the lecture. Just and text people, boom. you know. Text the lecture. Why? How about paying attention? They'll actually read it. Yeah. Okay. 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 So um, now, do you ever uh, do you ever get kids like uh, who go to Moore Park and then they like matriculate to uh, prestigious art schools and stuff like yes, that? Yes, yeah. actually, lots. So you, you're encouraging that? Yeah, we have really good art students at Moore Park, and okay. they definitely matriculate to okay. really good schools. Based on based on having studied just with you, because of, of my yes, teaching. Okay, of just, I was going to say 100%. <laughs> nothing to do with any talent there. So what are, what are we looking at here? So this is my latest project. Wow, Speaking wow, wow. of the LEDs, it uses uh, sequenced LEDs. I'm working with a guy named Vaughn Hannon, who's helping me a lot, um, to make the lights change. We can control the color and we can make them um, move so that the wings of these birds look like they're moving. So this is a project for the International Museum of Art and Science in McAllen, Texas. And it opens, it's a solo installation that they commissioned, which is very exciting. Um, and it opens in April of 2018. Ooh. And it's going to have six of these birds. They're roseate spoonbills. And, um, Endangered species? They were endangered in the 1880s because they have pink feathers like flamingos and they almost were extinct because they you know they caught them to to use the feathers but for now fashion. they're coming back for fashion but the pink Hats feather is now if madonna starts wearing pink feathers though they could they could become endangered they yeah. could so they yeah. could become very popular again um but they're very very interesting birds and what's neat for me is not only the lights that are sequenced but they have uh, first time that they're interactive with motion sensors. So you'll walk past the bird and you'll hear the sound of its environment and you'll oh. hear the sound that it makes. And so that's one part of the project. And the other part of the project that I have to say is that it responds to the fact that McAllen's on the border with Mexico. Oh. So there's a border fence already there. And mm -hmm. um, there, I went down last year. But the spoonbill doesn't care about the fence. The they just fly over back and forth. Well, right? the spoonbill's area is being affected by, by the, fence? the fence and what's happening in the bay in general. Um, but I'm also embedding materials that I found along the border that people crossing the border have dropped oh, wow. behind. So there's this discussion of migration, both ah. human and bird wow. migration. So I it's like got a lot of sting. Okay, so you got yeah. a little, you got a little stuff in there. You're not beating anybody over the head with it, but it's there. Yeah, and they kind of have subtle. to. And if they ignore it, they we know that they consciously ignored it. And okay, yeah. I like that.
And then what's, ooh, what are we, this what are we looking at This is another one. So this is the one I'm working on right now. It's the fifth bird. It's coming down to the mangrove, um, which is where they build their nests. And I was going to make a nest, and then I thought, no, it's too corny to make a nest. So I'm just making the mangrove out of PVC pipe and PVC pipe fittings. Because, you know, oil is a huge thing there in Texas, and oh, these yeah. birds their habitat is, uh, you know, confronted with so much industry, so much pollution, so much plastic, so much stuff. So I don't want it to look like a natural nest. I want it to look like a mangrove that's sort of knotted and Which is kind of, it's, a, it's the subtext of what this bird is actually going through, exactly. interacting with man-made chemicals and, and stuff every day. Wow. Yeah. This is uh, some good stuff. So this is going to be in April right. in McAllen, Texas. At a museum. At a museum, the okay. International Museum of Art and Science. And then it'll come back to LA, and next January it'll be at the museum in Lancaster at the MOA, MOA. Museum. You're going to have a show at MOA? Is mm -hmm. it part of a group show at MOA, or are you it's solo? It's part show? of a group show that has to do with the environment, Great. peace on earth, or something. Great. Okay, well, the curatorial program at MOA is pretty strong. Yeah. Um, and I, I like the diversity there, so um, wow. Well, hey. I'm a big fan of Cynthia Minette. Oh. Manet, Monet, Minet, Minette. <laughs> and, uh, and your studios at the Brewery Art Colony, are you open for the I am going to open October 21st and 22nd this time. So, yeah. For the Brewery Art for Walk. For the Art Walk. 2017, if you're watching our archives. But, uh, but so, uh, this, is your, this is not your first Brewery Art Walk. And it's not walk. my first Brewery Art Walk. But you don't walk, open But I haven't done it in a long time. Okay. Well, so. Cynthia, yeah. thank you for joining us thank on you. Modern Art Blitz. Thank you, It was Matt. a blast having you. We'll be back right after this.